We should have had them mics as well, I think. <laughs> All right, here's a, a quick one from, this is a, a great name, Chadmiral Akbar. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming, I'm hoping his name is Chad, and he added it to Chadmiral Akbar, otherwise that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm sure, I'm sure he has a vanity plate that says it's a trap. All right. <laughs> The names, your bid four tunes, your Dagobah system, your four lumps. Uh, uh, is there a process uh, to the names? Is it a random? We'll throw up some of the, the, the names. Maybe you've got a, a, a quick uh, Tatooine, Ewok, Darth Vader, R2D, or Dexter, Dexter, Dexter. Is there? Is, are there stories behind them? Is it something you pulled out of a hat? What is the? Uh, what is? What is the story? Well, right from the very beginning, um, uh, the one thing about writing is I don't like to do it, and uh, so I go to work at nine. I get off at 6, and uh, all the writing is done between 5.45 and 6. <laughs> because I can't put it off anymore, I've got to get my three pages done, otherwise I'm toast. So I spend the rest of the day doing things that are supposed to be important, but aren't but really are just a matter of waiting to get the mail. And, uh, and one of those things is to write down names. I have a little book that has names, so I, I'm constantly saying, oh, that would be a good name. And I do it with my son, with my, you know, wherever we are in a restaurant, I'm like, oh, that's a good name, I'll write that down. Uh, and so, so why do you have characters like Friendly? Like, why, where, where? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a new Admiral Nabisco. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look real hard, you're going to see a lot of that. <laughs> uh, the, uh, what did I say, Ewoks is a derivation of where we live and where the Skywalker Ranch is, is on an old, uh, Indian site where an Indian village was, Miwok Indians. Uh, so that's where Miwok came from. Uh, uh, Dexter Jester is named after my son, Jess, who I call Jester. Uh, what were some of the other ones? You uh, Darth Vader. That's Darth Vader? Vader. Yeah, exactly. Oh, everybody knows that one. That's Darth, that's Dark Water uh, and or uh, Dark Father. And right. It's Dark Father in Dutch or Dutchish. Dutchish. Dutch. Is there a Dutchish language? I didn't realize yeah. that. It's very similar to Belgian. Belgian. Yeah. See that Belgian actually was taken over by Star Wars. And uh, can I tell you that is true. This actually brings up a good point. So I'm walking through the convention center and there's a TIE fighter and it's a full size TIE fighter. And I said, oh, that's amazing that George brought that in here for people to see. And they're like, no, that was built by the uh, Belgian 501st. Yeah. And, uh, They've had, yeah. They've had they political controversy here. there, whether they're French, whether they're German, you know, whether they're Belgian, mm -hmm. and so they're going to split into three different countries now, four different countries. One of them is Valorant, <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's a bunch of the 501st that are starting their own army there. They're going to actually break away when the whole referendum happens. <laughs> what does it say? What does it feel like? when you see the 501st and there are divisions and these sort of elite costuming organizations in every country in the world. Obviously, for me, I think is Germany the largest outside of the United States? I know Florida is the largest in the United States. The, the thing about the 501st is great. It's just spraying into life, you know, from the fans, from going to conventions. Right. You know, building the suits and two guys get together and I want to do that too. And you know, now it's like 5,000 strong and 32 countries, and they're everywhere I go, wherever we need them. And and uh, and, and the thing of visiting the kids in hospitals, uh, you don't understand the significance of that until you actually see it in action and you see the smiles on the kids' faces, the you know being overwhelmed. It's just you know, it's a great thing right. all the way around. Is there any concern? Yeah. When you see that the largest Bible first overseas is in Germany, do you have any? <laughs> <laughs> when you see the, I guess, uh, I guess it's called stormtrooper. When, when you see. <laughs> Does, did a, if, if I can, does the, does the Polish 501st ever get nervous? <laughs> the German 501st, they're going to be coming in here, they're going to panic. Well, you notice know, that the Belgian 501st has got TIE Fighters, <laughs> they've got exactly. Job of the Hut. I mean, nobody's going to take over Belgium, that's for sure. No. <laughs> I think we're trying to, 
We're trying to keep that on the down low. You look back, it seems sort of preordained that there would be a great success uh, to these stories. But when you're doing uh, A New Hope, and this really is a very different style of filmmaking and, and, and a new type of film, how do you stay positive when everything is sort of turning against you in being able to produce this, being able to create it in the style that you have imagined it? What, what was the feeling like at that time? Well, it helps me not. <laughs> Yeah. It helps to be nuts. But I, I think we've just written the title for your autobiography. It helps to be nuts. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a funny thing when you... I like to build things and make things. And part of that, out of that, when people like to create things, is an obsession to not have other people intrude. And you have to have just a, such persistence, be so stubborn, and just say, I'm right, I don't care what the rest of the world thinks. You know, yeah, you, you know, God help you if you're wrong, but it's uh, it's the only way you can do it is just march forward no matter what happens to Sam Wright, this is going to be fine, and you just keep going no matter what the odds are against you. On New Hope and even then on, on uh, Attack of the Earth, too many of them, uh, the uh, Empire Strikes Back, uh, you know, there was, it was very dark. Even after, you know, the first New Hope, Getting the next film going was very, very difficult. And uh, there was a lot of times where it looked like it wouldn't get finished, and we went through a whole lot of stuff. And, and you just say, you, you know, I believe in this completely, and I will sink with the ship if that's what it comes down to. And if you don't have that commitment, it won't happen. Right. And, and how did that work out for you? Not, <laughs> no. not so well? Oh, you get it next time. Yeah, I ended up thinking over my life. And, yeah, sure. You know, I'll never be the same. That's is there anything that happened in that, in that process that was changed by other forces that you would change back? Were, were, there, were there certain network decisions or studio decisions or things like that that affected the final product in a manner that, that to no, this day, I, you, or you were able to, to push it through? I was very lucky in that um, I'm from San Francisco. My studio is in San Francisco. We're a long way from Hollywood. Right. I made the movies in England. I tried to stay as far away from those guys as possible. When I when I did a graffiti, it was you know a disaster. They didn't even count it as a movie. It was like a they were they didn't even, they were trying to decide whether they were going to release it as a TV movie or not because they didn't think it was that good. So they when they finally got a hold of the slot, they didn't see anything. But at the very end, they said, "Oh, we got to change it." And they cut five minutes out, you know, for whatever reason I don't know. Uh, and uh, maybe very angry, but then it became a giant hit. Then I wrote on the hotels of American Graffiti and was fortunate to find uh, a studio executive, uh, Alan Ladd Jr., that said, look, um, you got another project? And I said, well, I got this sort of space opera thing. It's not, you know, it's really goofy. And so he read the script and he said, look, I, I don't understand what you're doing, but I think you're a talented guy, and I'll invest in you. But and then he had to sort of keep selling it to the studios, board of directors, and stuff for like two years because they really didn't, you know, they weren't quite as uh, open to new right. ideas as. Uh, but you can't do all the way through. Can't do all the way through. The only thing I didn't get to do is obviously we ran out of money. We went over schedule. Uh, I couldn't do the job of the hut scene. I couldn't do some of the special effects. I couldn't do so. I had to bring my vision down quite a bit. And um, but being consistent and stubborn in the way I am, you know, when Star Wars became a huge success.